Hey guys, I'm Ritwik and welcome to Intro to Machine Learning series brought to you by IST. Today we'll be going ahead and learning about what machine learning actually means. Uh, a basic, you know, intro to machine learning you can say. So machine learning is an application of artificial intelligence providing the system the ability to learn automatically and improve from experience without being explicitly programmed. You know, machine learning's main focus is development of computer programs by accessing data and using it to learn for themselves. So, uh, let me explain that in simple words. See, uh, you all agree that we humans can learn from past experiences, right? And humans train these, uh, and humans train these machines by writing uh, codes and programs to perform tasks, but what if machines can be trained that uh, can be trained by humans to analyze the trend and predict the output machine can do the machines can do it themselves without being without having to being as explicitly programmed that would make that would make our job a lot easier so uh, so it's like the mach it's like giving the machine an intelligence an artificial intelligence right so let, let 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 me take an example. Uh, let's say uh, let's say there's a guy called there's a guy called Paul, and uh, he he likes and dislikes a couple of songs. You know, like he's play, he's listening to a lot. He's listening to a bunch of songs, and some of them he likes, and some of them he doesn't. Uh, so and now like now now as his friend, you've you've got to select him a playlist. So what are you gonna do? You don't exactly know. What are the songs he's gonna like, and what are the songs he's not gonna like, which he hasn't heard, by the way. So you have to, uh, you have to suggest him new songs uh, or give him a playlist of new songs which he's gonna like. So how do you know if he's gonna like them or not when, when you don't have any? So you analyze the prior data which you have, like, uh, like the, like the song, you know, like the previously the songs he previously used to listen to. What like, uh, you can keep off factors like tempo, you know, if it's mellow or or it's genre rap hip hop or or it's notes like if it's a high noted song or it's a male or female artist or the instruments used you know it, if it's a classic song or whatever like you see these things and like uh, say he likes a fast tempo song with 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 hip hop genre he he likes like he likes it to be less instrumental and be more electrical something like that okay so you can based on that based on finding the common factor between common factors between uh, the songs he likes you can predict the songs he's, which he might like you know so uh, that's that's exactly what the computer is going to do you know like uh, it, it it looks at your past choices to classify the new songs okay uh, now now let's uh, go on ahead to classification uh, let's 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 get to applications of um, uh, machine learning first you know uh, you know web searches your op how your web searches are optimized you wonder ranking these pages on what uh, what is most likely to be clicked on computational biology you know rational designing of drugs uh, based on uh, based on past experiments finance you know to to pre uh, it's going to evaluate your risk and credit offers uh, you know, it kind of optimizes. It kind of optimizes your choices to suggest you a good way to invest money through through analyzing trends, through analyzing past trends, uh, space exploration, and of course robotics. Robotics intensively needs artificial intelligence. You know, to detect objects in front of it, and you know, to classify the objects and to take a deviation if there is an object. The kind of learning which every single thing cannot be programmed it has to learn some things and uh, information extraction like uh, asking questions over databases across webs uh, showing you advertise showing you advertisements being optimized based on your previous purchases or you know or even even how spotify suggests you a playlist as i gave you an example before about the selection of songs then yeah of course debugging i, for I just forgot to mention debugging uh like labor in it's a as deb debugging is a labor intensive process uh it, it could suggest where the bugs are based on like a lot of other programs and 
you know seeing based on looking at where the bugs are in many a lot of other codes so that would be very helpful you know like machine learning can cut short a lot of labor a lot of labor intensive processes which which you need to put a lot of human effort and time on machine learning can take that away and make our jobs a lot easier Let, let's go ahead into classification of machine learning so there is supervised machine learning supervised machine learning as the name indicates there is a presence of a supervisor kind of like a teacher so basically supervised machine learning uh, is a learning in which we teach the machine using the data which is already labeled completely labeled that means the data is tagged with the correct answer already after that the machine is provided with a new set of examples so that the supervised machine learning algorithm analyzes the training data and produces a correct outcome for the label data you know like the examples which we train are uh, trained on like you know you have to uh, uh, let let me just tell you how a machine learning algorithm works first so you you have a large amount of data with the uh, with its results or with its uh, with its with its output so now the now now you feed it now you feed this machine learning model some some part of the data okay some part of the data like a large amount of data now it's now the machine is going to you know look at these examples look at the features and look at the output analyze this and come up with a way and you know and the algorithm tries to predict when 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 you give it a new or when you give it a new example without the output the algorithm tries to predict the output this is how it works and and of course there uh, to you know uh, to you know know the know your know the accuracy of how well your model is working you can have you can you can train you can train a part of your you can use part of your data to train and a small part of your data to even test like uh, like you already know the output but you see what the but you see what your model is predicting and compare it with the actual output so you can actually get the accuracy that way uh, so this is test and train data so uh, now let me uh, let me tell you how uh, supervised machine learning works okay so supervised machine learning is basically the train the training set of data which you're using has already labeled set of data like everything is classified with the the classification of the clusters have a name already and now it has now it has when the new examples are presented in front of it is that it has to classify it within these pre existing categories for for instance uh, let uh, let's take a fruit basket in which there are grapes oranges apples and bananas a bunch of fruits so uh, now with each of these fruits we, you know our training data let's say our training data uh, there are a bunch of fruits now you pick each each one of these fruits like one apple out of the many and like train this and and train the model like if it's a red thing if it's a red circular shaped uh, fruit with a bump on its top it's supposed to be an apple and if it's a bent cylindrical yellowish green fruit it's supposed to be a banana and if it's a circular uh, tangerine or orange colored fruit it's supposed to be orange such like that okay so you train with each you train with each of every fruit or more that's okay now now you pick a random fruit which is not already trained which which is not used while training and you and you uh, present it in front of the in front of your prediction model uh, suppose that's an apple and it's going to see that it's a it's a circular fruit it's red in color and has a bump on the top and it's going to now classify that into an apple you know uh, and same thing goes for a same thing goes for a banana since the machine has already learned the things from its previous data this time it, ha it just has to use it wisely it will first classify the uh it, it will first classify the fruit with the shape and color uh giving it giving it the giving it the fruit name as banana or apple or whatever and placing it in those categories placing it in the apple category under the apple label you know thus machine learns from the training data which in our case is the basket containing fruits and applies the knowledge to the test data which is the new fruit supervised uh, machine learning is uh, basically this okay so let's let's see some advantages and disadvantages so supervised machine learning allows collecting data and uh, produce the data output 
or it helps optimize the performance and you can get better accuracy and whatnot. Supervised machine learning helps to solve various type of real world computational problems. Some of its disadvantages are classifying a very big data can be challenging when there are too many labels to be classified into, you know. Training for supervised learning needs a lot of computational time. So it, it requires a lot of time is one of its disadvantages and unsupervised learning is training machine using information that is neither classified nor labeled and allowing the algorithm to act on the information without much guidance without any guidance actually here the actual task of the machine is to group unsorted information according to similarities and patterns you know it, it, the information is there are no labels to classify it into it has to create clusters in which it can group similar things that that is the task of an unsupervised machine learning model if you're getting me so it, it uh, uh, so he, here the task is to group unsorted information looking at the similarities patterns and differences without any prior training of the data you know unlike supervised learning there is no teacher that provides the means no training will be given to the machine okay therefore the machine is restricted to find hidden structures in unlabeled data by ourselves for instance suppose uh, it is given you have given an image of both cats and dogs which you have never ever seen okay you don't know that cats exist and dogs exist just for suppose thus machine has no idea about the features of cats and dogs so we can't recognize it as a cat or a dog okay like you don't know what is a cat you don't know what is a dog you're seeing these animals for the first time in front of you you're seeing a bunch of cats and a bunch of dogs in front of you but it can categorize the data according to the similarity patterns and differences we can easily you know but even though you've never seen cats and dogs into your life you can separate them into two different groups of course you don't know what to call those groups but you know how dogs like like dogs look different from cats dogs have a snot and they bark cats meow and cats are small and you know uh, they don't have snots like you clearly see the differences if you see a bunch of cats and dogs you clearly see the similarities between two cats and you clearly see the difference between a dog and a cat so you will be able to you know classify them into two parts you know uh, first first may uh, okay so we can yeah first first may contain all pics having dogs in it and second part may contain all pics of having cats in it here you didn't learn anything before means no there has been no training or example like you didn't know what a cat or a dog is it allows the model to work on its own to discover patterns and information uh, it has to discover the trends patterns information all on its own it mainly deals with unlabeled data unlabeled unsupervised learning uh, un so this is this is basically what unsupervised learning is uh, a very good example is clustering you know a clustering a clustering problem is where you want to discover the inherent groups in the data such as grouping customers by purchasing behavior you know there like there is no fixed label like what this kind of customer like what prefers to buy this kind of stuff or prefers to spend in a certain budget or something like that uh, now there is there are two more types called semi supervised learning training data includes few few with labeled desired outputs and few without reinforced learning this is a special kind so uh, it, it's like it's like when imagine when you are when you when you are given a task or but there is no force there is no consequences of not doing the task but you know, but there is a reward at the end if you do the task successfully so so you know that 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 because of the rewarding mechanism you're going to work and complete your task Revo even this kind of works like that so reward from a sequence of actions uh, ai types like it uh, ai types like it it is one of the most ambitious kind of learning program you know there is an ambition so it pursues the task it pursues to complete the task that is how this works so of course uh, supervised machine learning is classified into three kinds uh, the three kinds of predictions which you can get which is classification regression and probability estimation uh, so classification is when 
when there are discrete labels you know discrete labels which are not continuous like apple as we saw apple banana and all so that it's it's distinct and discrete labels are there and it has to classify the data into these labels upon prior being trained and regression when the function being learned is continuous like there is a continuous set of values for there is a continuous set of the prediction is a continuous set of values like based on this feature this feature like you, you know for an example uh, predicting a person's uh, predicting a person's weight some weight by their height and uh, by their height and width you know like uh, predicting a person's weight by their height width and their body fat percentage so that would be that would be direct but uh, you're getting the point right uh, you have to predict a continuous set of numbers based on a feature so it's like your your uh, your output is going to be a function of those features put in put it in a you know uh, and probability estimation where the output of the function is a probability like pro you know it's it's kind of like classification but uh, in classification it's classified it's, it's classified solidly into one class but in probability estimation it's like the probability of this being in a certain class is this much and probability of the same thing being in another class and another class is that much and that much so in classification whichever probability suppose it's 50 percent 25 percent and 25 percent in class a b c respectively like a data uh, a certain data point can be classified into a b c classes and the probability of it being in a is 50 25 25 in b and c respectively it's going to be classified into class a like your your classifier is going to put it in class a since the probability since that's the modal probability that high the probability of it like that's the modal class right it has the the probability of it being in that class is the highest so okay uh, so that's it for today see you in the next section